Hello, I'm John Myers. Thank you for liking my Power Church tutorial page on Facebook. If you haven't had a chance, please visit my tutorial site at empoweryourchurch.com. You can click on the picture on the Facebook page and it will take you within the Facebook window to my website. However, some of the tutorials are better viewed if you go straight to the website empoweryourchurch.com and not try to view them through the Facebook window. I've enjoyed making these tutorials, and I enjoy helping out on the Power Church Help Forum. I've been using Power Church now for about 20 years myself, and I like to say I've made just about every mistake that can be made. I hope that my help will lead you in the right direction so you don't have to make so many mistakes. I'm going to go right from this introduction into one of my tutorials. If you have a few minutes, please stick around and view one of my tutorials, or just see how they're structured. Or perhaps you can visit my website and view some of the free tutorials at EmpowerYourChurch.com. And if you like, you can sign up for a month and see how many of the tutorials you can get through. I'm sure there will be some helpful pointers there for you. Thanks again, and I hope to see you at my website, EmpowerYourChurch.com, or on the Power Church Help Forum. Quite often I get asked how to redo the chart of accounts in Power Church from scratch. Most often, I strongly suggest that you use the existing chart of accounts and make modifications, especially if you're new to Power Church, because chances are you're going to use 90% of the default chart of accounts in Power Church. However, if you're certain that you want to redo the chart of accounts from scratch, these are the steps. First, you'll have to delete the entire chart of accounts. Then you should get out a piece of paper and outline your new chart of accounts before entering it into Power Church. Finally, when you have on paper the chart of accounts that you want, make your additions into Power Church. So let's get started. If you've been using the existing chart of accounts in Power Church and you want to start over with a new chart of accounts, you'll first have to go into the Accounting Setup tab and use the Restart Accounting button. You can't delete accounts with posted transactions in them. The Restart Accounting will take you back to a fresh install of Power Church with respect to the accounting module. If you have posted contributions, this will not affect them. So let's go ahead and start with the Restart Accounting button. Before you hit the Restart Accounting tab, let me be very clear. You will lose your accounting data, so make a backup. You will need to re-enter your beginning balances once you start the setup accounting process again. So write down your ending balances. They will become your new beginning balances. What I do is keep a second install of PowerChurch running on my computer with my data from prior to 2010, which is the last time I hit the Restart Accounting tab. Again, you will lose all of your accounting data. You will need to write down your beginning balances. Your contribution data will not be affected. Now we can proceed. Now we're at the point when we click on the accounting tab that we're at the setup accounting wizard. And whether you've hit the restart accounting tab or you have a new installation of Power Church, you'll be at the same point. When we go through the setup accounting wizard this time, we will not be entering our beginning balances. And I'll repeat that. We will not enter any beginning balances this time through the setup wizard. This will create the default chart of accounts and we don't want any balances in any of the accounts because we're going to delete all of the chart of accounts customize the chart of accounts, and then manually enter our beginning balances through Enter Transactions. So let's quickly go through the menus on the Setup Accounting Wizard until we come to the checking account, and we'll have to give this a name. PowerChurch does require a default checking account. There's no way around that, but we can rename and renumber this account according to our new schedule. Now if we preview the chart of accounts, we will see that PowerChurch has created the default chart of accounts. So let's go into Fund Accounting Setup and Maintain Chart of Accounts and begin deleting accounts. When I click on the Locate tab, the accounts appear indented according to their level number. Notice the 1000 account, Assets, is all the way to the left. Notice the 2000 account, Liabilities, is also all the way to the left. So I would suggest we keep these Level 1 Group Accounts. 
because just about every accounting system is going to have these level one account categories. In addition, there are three accounts required by PowerChurch, the checking account, a net asset account, and a released from restriction account. These accounts can be renamed and renumbered according to our new chart of accounts schedule after we've created the chart of accounts. So we will keep the level one group account assets and I'll proceed to the next account. Notice the D and delete is underlined. I'm going to use my keyboard to delete this to save time. I'm going to type D, confirm with Y for yes, and hit N for next to proceed to the next account. Hit D for delete, Y to confirm, and for next. Now we're at the checking account that we cannot delete. So I'm just going to type the N key and go to the next. D for delete, Y for confirm, N for next. And we're going to proceed until we reach another account that has a dependency. I have deleted all of the accounts down to 3110, which is also a required account. So I will proceed to the next and continue to delete the accounts. The next required account that we encounter is 4999, the released from restriction account. So we will keep this account and proceed to the next account. After deleting what seems like 100 accounts, click on the locate tab and you should have your level one group accounts and the three required accounts left. And if you accidentally deleted one of your level one group accounts, you can always add it back in. The next step is to lay out your chart of accounts on paper. And I'm just showing an example. You can use tabs to show indentation level. Remember you have six levels of indentation. You can have group accounts and detail accounts. PowerChurch allows levels one, two, and three to be group accounts only. Levels 4 and 5 can be group accounts or detail accounts, and level 6 can be a detail account only. And just some suggestions when doing your outline, consider having an activity with a year followed by a season, or you can have the year first and then the activity and then the season. Try some different ways and think about what the reports will look like in PowerChurch before you make any entries, and you'll save yourself time in the long run. Finally, when your chart of accounts is ready on paper, enter it into PowerChurch in Fund Accounting, Setup, Maintain Chart of Accounts, and use the Add tab, and set up the accounts according to the outline that you've created. Now you can go into Fund Accounting, Enter Transactions, and manually enter your beginning balances. I redid our entire chart of accounts for our church in 2009. We have four church services in four church buildings. We have only one pastoral staff, but four buildings. And each one has its own general fund and missions fund. Therefore, I wanted to renumber the chart of accounts and do the groupings so that the groupings work not only within each fund, but across all of the funds. What I didn't realize was that until I had dollar amounts in some of the new accounts, I didn't know the results of my groupings. So by mid-2009, I had decided I had made some serious mistakes. At the beginning of 2010, I redid our entire chart of accounts a second time. Now it works just fine. I hope that with proper planning, your chart of accounts will come out just fine the first time. I'm John Myers.